Okay, so in this video, we will introduce briefly the basic ideas of linear regression. Now here's the setup. The question is, given two variables, say x and y, does there exist a linear relationship between those two variables? So here's the setup. Suppose we have two variables x and y, and we have pairs of variables for any given sampled value of say x, the first variable, you have a corresponding sampled value y of the second variable. So suppose that you gather a value of x, say x1, your first value, and corresponding to x1 is y1, a value for the second variable. This is your first pair. Then you do the same thing, you sample again a value for x, it's your second variable, and you find the corresponding value for y. So x2, y2. And you sample in total n data pairs. So finally, the nth value for xn, your first variable x, and the nth value that corresponds to xn for the second variable y. So we have n data pairs. And again, as I've said, the question is, does there exist a linear relationship between the two variables, between x and y? And this can be seen if you visualize your pairs in the xy plane. The first coordinate will be the coordinate of the point along the x-axis. The second coordinate will be the coordinate of the point along the y-axis. So you can imagine producing what's called a scatter plot or a scatter diagram. Just for argument's sake here, I'll assume that the variables are positive, so I can draw the points in the first quadrant. If this was x1, y1, then you'd get this point. x1 would be the x-coordinate, y1 would be the y-coordinate. So this point would correspond to this data pair. Second point, x2, y2, suppose it lands here. So then this would be x2 and this would be y2. And so each data pair gives you a point in the xy plane. So what you have will look a little bit like a cloud of points, which is why it's called a scatter diagram, because the points are scattered in the plane. So suppose a scatter diagram looks something like this. So you can see from your plot, given an x value, you have the corresponding y value. And the question is then, can you somehow find the equation of a line that will pass through this scatter diagram closest to the points on average? And the answer is yes, and not only yes, but this line is unique. There is a unique line that you can draw across your scatter plot that will pass on average closest to all the points of your diagram. And this line is called the line of least squares. So here you can sort of get a feeling for, it may look like this. On average, it looks like we're pretty close to all the points. And this is again, the line of least squares, or the least squares line. And of course it's a line, so it's given by a linear equation. And we're going to write y equals, and normally we'd write ax plus b, so the multiple of x giving you the slope, plus b the y-intercept, the constant term. But here I'll use a hat times x plus b hat. Now it's not clear why I'm using a hat on a and b, but this will be clear later on when we discuss statistics in more details. So a hat is the slope of your line of least squares, and b hat is the y-intercept, right? If you set x to be 0, then you're here, and the y-value will be b hat, therefore the y-intercept.
Okay, so this is the first thing we're going to find when we discuss linear regression. You have a set of n data pairs, look at the scatter plot, the line that passes through the scatter plot closest to all the points on average is the line of least squares, and it has of course a linear equation in the form of y equals a hat x plus b hat. There is still a second question now, and that is how good is this line in terms of making predictions? The whole point of having this line is then you can model a system of predictions. You might say, well here, if I had an observed x value, let's say here, then you could use the value on your least squares line to predict the corresponding y value. So the question is now, how good will those predicted values be? Therefore, how close on average are the points to the line of least squares? Sometimes the points will be really close to the line. And you'll have almost a perfect linear relationship. Other times the points will be really far on average of the line, and then you would have a very weak linear relationship. So we need another quantity that will measure this um, this situation, and that is the so-called coefficient of correlation. And it will tell you again how good is your linear relationship. Because no matter what data pairs you obtain, you will always find a line of least squares. Sometimes it will give you very good predictions, sometimes it will give you very poor predictions. And what will measure the quality of your predictions will be the coefficient of correlation. Now we denote this coefficient with a lowercase r, and this quantity will always be between 1 and negative 1. And so now a natural question is to ask, okay, well what does that mean? How do we interpret this? Well, we'll look at sort of three possibilities. R can be very close to 0, if you think of this interval for R. 0 is the center, 1 is the right hand point, negative 1 is the left hand point. So R will, R, sorry, will always be lying between negative 1 and 1. Let me show you an example for the three main cases when we're close to negative 1, when we're close to 0, and when R is close to 1 to see how to read the value of R, what it tells you about the quality of the linear regression. Suppose that you have now the following scatter diagram. Suppose that the points are really close. If I draw, let's say, this line, so here I'm kind of cheating, I'm drawing first a line of these squares, and suppose that on average the points are really, really close to the line of these squares. All the points are really close. Then, well two things. First, the points are really close to the line of these squares, so you have a very good linear relationship between the variables. And second, the line has a positive slope. As x increases, y increases as well. And in this case, r will be very close to 1. So whenever r is positive, this implies that your line of these squares will have a positive slope. Now the closer r is to 1, the better the linear relationship is. If r was exactly equal to 1, not 0.99, exactly 1, every point of your scatter diagram would be lying exactly on the line of least squares. So if r is exactly equal to 1, you would have a perfect linear relationship between the variables x and y. 
And if r is maybe not 1, but a little close to 1, very close to 1, then you have a very good linear relationship. Okay, let's look at now the other extreme. So this would be when r is close to 1. The other extreme is when r is close to negative 1. And you can probably guess what's going to happen in this case. It is the exact same conclusion, except that we will have a line of least squares with a negative slope. So, whenever the coefficient of correlation r is negative, your line of least squares will have a negative slope. And if r is very close to negative 1, the closer you are to negative 1, the closer you are from having a perfect linear relationship. So again, the points would be really close to the line of least squares. And again, because we have a negative slope, r will be negative, and because the points are really close to the line of least squares, r will be very close to negative 1. So now, always remember this. When r is positive, you have a least squares line with a positive slope. If r is negative, you have a least squares line with a negative slope. The closer r is from 1 or negative 1, the better is your linear relationship. And finally, the question is, what if r is close to 0? And you can imagine when r is close to 0, what it means is you will have a very poor linear relationship, as it is the opposite of being close to 1 in the case of a positive linear relationship, and negative 1 in the case of a negative linear relationship. So let's draw one last scatter diagram when r is close to 0. Suppose your line of least squares will look something like this now. So here we have a positive slope, so r would be positive. But what if the points in your scatter diagram look like this now? Then you can see that what you have is a terrible linear relationship. Here is your line of least squares, and it is on average very far from the points in your scatter diagram. So here, even though the line of least squares exist, it gives you a very poor linear approximation, right? You could say, well, okay, if I had this x value here, well, the value that would be predicted by the line of least squares would be this value, but because the points are so scattered, it's not a very good prediction. And so when this happens, r is very close to 0. So the smaller r is in absolute value, so the closer it is to 0, the worse the linear relationship is between the variables x and y. If r is positive and close to 1, you have a very good linear relationship that is a positive relationship. If r is very close to negative 1, you have a very close and very good negative linear relationship. And this is how you should interpret the coefficient of correlation. Okay, so we have now our two key objects when we have a set of data pairs from two variables. We have our line of least squares, so the equation of our line passing through the scatter diagram closest to the points on average, and we have a measure of how good this linear relationship is between x and y, given by the coefficient of correlation. The only question now is, well, given an actual set of data pairs, how do you compute your line of these squares, and how do you compute your coefficient of correlation? This will be the topic of our next video, where we'll work through a, an example.